and, and, and all honesty, if it all goes sideways before it's all over and one of you's like, don't post that shit, then I won't. <laughs> so, so it'll be fine. So, so I'm, I'm going to start. Uh, I've been making everybody do this. I'm going to make everybody introduce themselves. I'm going to start with you, Barb. Introduce yourself and tell me where you are and what you do. All right. Hi, I'm Barb Hunter. And Barbie! <laughs> Barbie! Yay, Barb! I live in one of the nation's only hyphenated cities. I live in Cedra Woolley, Washington, about 70 miles north of Seattle, and I'm a cello teacher now, so I've been hanging out at home doing lessons on the interwebs. Cool. Nice. I'm Virtual not, cello I'm lessons. Phone. Hopefully it's not too loud. No, you sound and look great. You sound and look great. Uh, I'm going to go clockwise. Kip, who are you? Where are you? What do you do? Kip Bro, Cincinnati, Ohio. Until the end of this month, I work at GE Aviation. Ah. Uh, software engineering, project management. Resumes online. <laughs> right? <laughs> Bass player. Right? Bass player. Danny, with you. Uh, uh, yeah, presiding over two closed businesses, uh, Motor and Woodward, and uh, doing a lot of fishing in my downtime. Right on. <laughs> Steve? Oh, my first ever sauger. First ever what? You, you sauger. Sauger. Google it. It's a thing. <laughs> is it is it S A W G E R? S A U. Oh. oh. Sauger. The type of fish I take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steve, Steve, introduce yourself. Say who you are, where you are, what you do. Steve Metz, sitting in Northside, Ohio. Right on. Uh, I've been working at a children's hospital in Cincinnati for almost 20 years now as a software engineer. Right on. Yeah. Right on. Uh, Bill? Hey, I'm Bill, Cincinnati, Ohio. Really? Yeah. I work for one of the local television stations. Billy, don't pick your ear on the video. Don't touch your face. <laughs> You're breaking the zone, man. Oh. Um, I'm an IT manager there. And I'm a yeah. drummer. And a drummer. And each and every one of you was a member of a band together in Cincinnati called Roundhead. Yep. So, you know, I, I, fully, I fully expect to hear from Karen Oldendick. Oh, she's a fan. <laughs> she's the only person on the face of Earth who has a Roundhead tattoo. That is correct. She may have had it removed, though. <laughs> I doubt I'm it. She's sure. You no know, I'm one thing I can say to, about Karen with absolute certainty is she's very loyal. She is super loyal. She's a diehard fan. Yeah. I, think if we, I think she would, if we decided to play a song right now, she would somehow show up. In this meeting. <laughs> I, well, now, I that, now, that we're, there. <laughs> now that we're on the subject, I'm kind of sorry I didn't invite her. <laughs> yeah, you should have. That would have been cool. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was going to have problems managing this many people, but you guys are very quiet. Barb, tell, tell me a little bit about virtual cello teaching. How many students do you have, and was it a thing where you went to some place for a while, or has it always been in your home? No, um, so it was. I was doing about half my students in my house, and then I would drive mostly to Bellingham. Right. Um, 30 minutes away and do students, you know, go to students' houses and teach them there. So it's only under the new pandemic world that I'm doing them online. And I had about 25 students and about half of them are doing online lessons in various degrees of technical awareness and audio quality and a lot of lessons where it looks like this, like I see right. that <laughs> and it's feeling light and no cello at all. So right. Got its challenges, but it, it's kind of fun. It, it would seem like it'd be real challenging to to show them how to hold it and and uh, really cop the technique properly. Right. Yeah. And so I, I'm not doing my real beginner students because you you have to have so much physical interaction. Right. I think my last in person lesson I got sneezed on by two students, so it's it's nice to have a physical break for now. But I, I miss the little ones. They're so much fun. Right. Right. Yeah. So how hey, are you? Are you in your house? Am this I in my house? Yeah. This is the what is room, this room you're sitting in? This Me? Is the cello room. I live in a small house with only two bedrooms, but one of those two bedrooms is the cello room. Oh, oh, cool. I, I personally like the color of the wall. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks. I got a cool painting by, um, if any of you remember Mark Pickerel, the original drummer for the Screaming Trees, this is his younger sister Megan's painting. Oh, neat. Wow. Oh, artist, yeah. <laughs> this is actually yeah. where the fellow lessons go down. And that's- yeah, like skinny oh. people. <laughs> Who's this? Sadie. This is Sadie. Hey, She's Sadie. Good girl. Sadie. She says hello. <laughs> So, so uh, Barb, how long have you been straight, uh, all virtual, like uh, lockdown? If, if you will. I think my last in-person lesson was like March thirteenth or something like that. And Friday that, the thirteenth. Afternoon, yeah, that afternoon the governor did the stay-at-home order. Right on. So I've uh, really pretty much been nowhere other than walking the dog for all that time, two months. Right. But I right. get up alone. You know, I like reading and walking and gardening and. Right. Reading. Um, I, I know I actually have a lot of friends that feel as though they spent their whole life preparing for this. They're like, it's just like staying yeah, home, reading a lot, uh, catching up on the news, feed up, yeah, that kind of thing. Zooming, I'm seeing more people than I was before. I think. Right. Like you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Kip, end of the month. End of the month. How long were you there? Uh, 13 years. Were you given the option of an early retirement? I'm not 60. Unfortunately, they, they, <laughs> I know they, you're not 60. I'm saying, I'm not far off. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I mean, it, I know. I, like, I'm only I six years out of it. <laughs> Give me my severance and a bowl of Cap'n Crunch and I'll be good. Right? Yeah, you know, um, they're doing 25% cuts. It's a deep cut. Aviation business is hard hit. Um, if the airlines are uh, flying their jets, they're, they're grounding them. They're not upgrading, they're not buying new jets, which means the, the airframers are not building and they're not ordering engines, so it's tough. Was GE the manufacturer on that, uh, I forget what the number was, on that MAX plane that they were having that, these issues with? 737 MAX, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they actually developed a new engine, um, and uh, but they didn't have anything to do with the system software that- Right, was on I that. heard it was really poor project management. <laughs> right. All those people died, I, man. I can't claim. You still show your face. <laughs> they just Project connect somewhere. Don't know the power they wield. I'm gonna go ahead and not blame Kip for this, just because I don't know anybody personally involved. It's in litigation. I can't talk about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Without a doubt. So your your plan is to just shift and 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 keep going, right? Just as they, as they say in the business world, I'm going to pivot. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite words. Just pivot. And, you know, Steve, we can unpack that later. Let's unpack that! Unpack that <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, it's a, I mean, the word pivot comes up a lot having these conversations with people because I've been talking to people and how they're adjusting their business, that kind of thing. Dan, I, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to have you in and talk about your circumstance, and it's just like, you know, the only insight I have is my brother and he's in a totally different place than you. I mean, he's just got that one neighborhood bar and he managed to talk his distributors into buying his inventory back. <laughs> but, yeah. but, you know, I, I mean, what, what's, your, what's your thought? I mean, it's obviously, I mean, you guys aren't opening like everyone, you're not even doing these soft opening things, right? Uh, no, I, I may have made a bad career choice. <laughs> it's a little late to start thinking that yes. way. Yes. <laughs> not, not pandemic friendly. Yeah, mm. no. Uh, rock and roll shows. Pandemic. Mm -mm. Rock and roll shows have gone the way of the airline industry. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, but the pl planes in the air, though, are a lot cleaner than they were before. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, you you so, needed uh, just to find a very few, a small group of very dedicated alcoholics, Dan. Yeah. Right. They're, They're out there. They're out there. No, there. You got to no. just find them. You, you just got to open this door. People will show up. But but that's the thing about the rock and roll show. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's that can't never happen again, right? Ah, uh, yeah. How does it? How is it even possible? Uh, I don't know. Six, six feet of distancing. That's no rock show. Yeah. Everybody, everybody yeah, wearing face masks. What about the vaccines coming, man? Yeah. That's right, Matt. It's gonna happen. You're Matt, working in that industry, Matt. Get on it. Humans have been congregating things. for millennia. So right. Congregate again. Yeah. And hope the Motor Pub and Woodward Theater will still be there when they begin congregating. I right. Think. Cool. I keep thinking of uh, uh, War of the Worlds. Is that it? Where the invaders uh, get exposed to our viruses? Die yeah. of the cold. Yeah. Anyway. 
I had a correlation between rock stars and the um, and the outer space monsters, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> move on. We'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> Steve working at Children's Hospital, uh, uh, yeah. doing programming. That's a home thing, isn't it? Or have you been going in? Hey, I'm, I'm working remotely. Well, we move on, Dan. I just wanted to. Say Kip, you're, we're losing you, buddy. Kip, you're all digitized and shit. I caught him. It says, it's because it's because Ben's downloading uh, GTA on Xbox <laughs> upstairs. Uh, I bet that's absolutely true. Okay. Bam! That was a great magic yeah, he trick. Left. He went to discipline. <laughs> He went to discipline. He did not go into technology business. We sure. just slap him around a little bit. Yeah, I'm working from home every day now. I haven't yeah. gone into our office for uh, almost three months now. So. Really? I've been pretty well, much locked in this room for three months, to be honest. Yeah, I I, um, I kind of feel the same way about this one. This is where I work all day, every day, too. Yeah. Thanks for putting the date up, Haggerty. Yeah, that was. <laughs> I just wanted to make yeah, sure nobody got confused. Down. No, this is for me later. Here. Next time, put the year, add the year for us. Yeah. <laughs> We're still doing this next year. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I'll, put, I'll put a little asterisk by things. Yeah. I just did this so I can look at a thumbnail and know exactly what I'm looking at. What is the, um, what's over your left shoulder? My left shoulder? Yeah, Nixon. that box, of, it's got uh, like cartoon figures on it. Yeah, what is that? This is the Dan Close eight ball collection. Oh, okay. cool. Yeah. It's literally the only thing that uh that I placed in this room deliberately. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> <laughs> Every, everything else just kind of fell in place. Yeah. Bill. Yeah. Billy. You work for a TV concern. <laughs> Are you going in? Um, I'm not in anymore. Unfortunately, I had to set up everybody's computer to go out, and finally I got. Ah, you were the you were the linchpin of the remote working. Yeah, a lot of sanitizer, tons of gloves. But that was a security <laughs> nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna say much about it because I don't want to diss anybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, if it's any consolation to you, nobody watches these things anyway. <laughs> Right. So, Barb, you mentioned you mentioned the thirteenth. I consider that D Day for pretty much everybody because March eighteenth, the following Monday, that's when Ohio canceled school, which was the most impactful for me personally. At least, <laughs> right out of the gate, I was just like, "Fuck, ah. fuck." Um, you know, I but. Everyone's talking about it going back now. I mean, I, I, what I what I really want I want to hear you guys talk about how it's been and how you think it's going to get back and in what way. Mm. Bill knows. <laughs> Bill knows. So, I mean, my personal okay. opinion, I don't think it's going to go back soon. I mean, I don't either. But I think I, I think I have, uh, one I think, of two things is going to happen. It's going to be either a vaccine or herd immunity, whichever comes first. It's going to be. Her Herb what if there's neither? Cost. Well, how there really couldn't be neither. I mean, couldn't there? Couldn't it just kind of drift where everyone kind of like keeps changing what they consider an acceptable death or case rate? Like herd immunity could have will happen no matter what. That's one point yeah. five million. Eventually, dead. it's a hell of a cost, but it would definitely that would come. It would, it would happen if we don't have the vaccine, but I don't. We don't have a government or a culture that's going to like allow us to all sit at home for three or four years and not work. <laughs> right. So, I worry about the people. I mean, people just can't obey rules. I yeah. mean, that's our biggest concern are idiots. I mean, well, I can't, social posts of uh, people. Say what? <laughs> science versus <laughs> politics, you know? Yeah. Damn, People Kip don't understand just coughed science. Up. Kip just coughed up the cure and, and he broke up. I know. So I know. We missed it. We missed he it. Had it, Kip. He had it in our <laughs> gone. Humanity yeah. missed it, Kip. The really sad thing about this is like there's no good answer for this. I mean, you can be like, have to wear no. 
we can do anything, but people got to feed their kids. People got to have a business. I mean, and nothing's really changed other than the fact that, you know, day one, we were wearing masks. We're still wearing masks and we're social distancing. Nothing else has really moved forward. So. Dan, it sounded like you were talking through your vacuum tube just a minute ago. What did you ah! say? <laughs> Kip, I'm going to go ahead and blame any issues you have with hearing or seeing any of this on your internet. <laughs> well, that, that's the whole thing that there is no good answer for any of this stuff but um i like hearing different opinions uh, about all of it i mean obviously we've I mean, got to learn i i don't believe any of the conspiracy theories or anything like that like at the end of the day i i, I believe we are in a, a real pandemic and that yeah. it has the capability of killing millions of people just in yeah. our country yeah and, and it may and it may well it may mm -hmm. um so ev i think everyone has to make their own personal decision on how they're going to live and how they're going to handle it and what risks they're going to take and what risks they're going to introduce to other people and I'm just, yeah we're trying to do the best we can in our household by essentially wearing masks whenever we're out in public especially inside in a public yeah. place and staying home as much as we can yep yeah that's about it it's the best you could do yeah it's the best you could do most that a, per, uh, a normal human being can do <laughs> you know what i mean like none of us is going to affect some really big change in this i wish we had a more uh cohesive vision as a country for what the hell we're doing but yeah I mean, that would have that would have helped out of right out of the gate yeah. yeah so well that whole thing's fucked so <laughs> you mean the country <laughs> yes. out there? Oh. leadership i saw a great post today it's like all this is all we're finding all the people have never their parents never told them no when they were growing up mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the, the big explosion of people rushing out and the, you know, and the, the terrifying photos, I mean, they've been circulating from different parts of the country for the last couple of weeks, really, you know, this bar, this mall, this store, you know, this kind of stuff. I mean, it, the, the fact is, is you, you, there's, there's a segment of the population you're never going to be able to get to do whatever they want to do. <laughs> it's just what it comes down to. And well, it's um, kind of like what are it's kind of a catch twenty two because that's kind of like one of the bedrock guiding principles of our country. <laughs> what makes America right? great? Yeah. Well, in a way, yeah, but I think there's you know this is an opportunity to, to kind of take a look at what what are necessary freedoms and and when is it more beneficial to everyone for people to just kind of forget about their own personal opinions and do and desire something, something for the greater good you know yeah well that was that, that was one of the things that you know i, I mean i, I would have thought that a, a cohesive plan might have included a much firmer restriction right out of the gate as far as yeah. wearing masks and and sheltering in place and quarantine and all that stuff um, instead of kind of this kind of loose, I mean, we really only had like three or four solid weeks nationwide where everybody was sort of yeah. following some kind of procedure. Uh, and the rest of the time it was kind of whatever. I've um, actually really appreciated, uh, Mike DeWine as our governor. And that's I know. surprising for me. I'm like a, as far left liberal as you probably are going to find in Ohio. <laughs> and, uh, but I've appreciated his leadership. Like, a lot because it's, it's been clear done, yeah it's done for ohio what could have been done for the whole country like if we had had that type of leadership at a national level i think he's not campaigning either he's trying. caved at the end he did so that kind of sucks <laughs> now we're all out there infecting each other we'll Probably. see i mean the next the next few weeks we'll, sh we'll we'll tell the tale right yeah um so Dan, you elected not to open at the first weekend. Do you have some kind of like schedule in mind where you're going to give it a shot in some regard, at least just like food and drink? No, uh, I, we, I mean, we're at the base of our operation, a live music venue. 
uh, right. everything, else, everything else is just bonus. Uh, so, you know, looking at how they require bars to operate, nobody can belly up to the bar. Everybody has to walk in and be seated. There's a wait staff. The mm -hmm. staffing costs are through the roof. The capacity is limited. Right. Nothing makes sense. And that's, you know, and that's after you start thinking about how do you keep everybody safe? So we quickly determined we're not opening and, and we're not opening in June. And uh, I'm happy to go out and watch how other folks are doing it and try to take notes. Uh, so uh, I'm out there wearing a mask. And uh, for instance, Friday opened up nobody's wearing a mask i was out right. in the bars i was out trying to participate wearing a mask and uh it's crazy uh, absolutely zero folk are uh i even i shaved my beard off this thing's usually about six inches longer I, <laughs> right i knocked no mask down. could contain it <laughs> it couldn't and um I, I knocked it down for my new mask lifestyle and uh <laughs> nobody else is really committed it looks good, that, that, it looks good. knock down you know, I enjoy wearing a mask. I go, I can go out and you all know I, I've got a, I, there's a large percentage of asshole in me and I can go out there and be a complete jerk and right. no one knows who's that jerk. Right. I don't know, wearing a mask. No. And, uh, no one can be certain. Yeah. It's, it's been liberating. It's worth <laughs> a, a beard beat down. Yeah. That's not Dan McCabe. <laughs> that's I mean, right sweetie, the, that's mask, the, ma bad. the mask the mask fits too well <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, the, I, mean, I love look when dan talks and seeing the old picture of roundhead behind him it it's astonishing how young we look uh-huh uh, I, I think we're yeah. like 30 in that picture we're not like 18 uh -huh. or something but we look like we are i don't think we're that old in that that's wild place. 30 no, yet. we're not 30. I don't think, I, yeah, maybe. We gotta be we'll just look really old now. Yeah, we're old. <laughs> that's, what, oh. that's, all, that's all we know. Yeah, we are grizzled. Yes. Barb, Barb's not grizzled. I'm, Barb's I'm, not all. Yeah, I'm grizzled. I'm wrinkly. <laughs> I'm grizzled. She has declared. <sighs> Things are sagging everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> sagging below the camera. Uh, I have that issue too. I'm losing weight, but getting fatter somehow. Does everyone have on pants? Be honest. Nope. I do. Yes. I gotta, I gotta get up and dress every day or I lose track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do that every day. Hey, yeah, I've been trying, I've been trying to wear regular clothes when I work. Just so I feel like I'm not a piece of shit. Can you see that? Uh, ah, cool. Paul Brooke, Paul Brooke. Bill Bullock, and oh. Steve. Yeah. Oh my God! Put that up again. Oh. Got some hair, Steve. Yeah, I had some long hair. Wow. Uh, anybody cool. Pardon me. I guess I have a hat on backwards. What is that? What's that from? From uh, the Z man. Z oh, man. Yes, Scott I, I, I dug this out because of uh, John oh, here. Honey. You have all of the old. Uh, I, you know, you I didn't used to. Archives? My, I, I do. Uh, my, I didn't yeah. used to. But for my birthday some years ago, my brother produced. He tracked down every copy, and so now I have oh, a collection. Really neat. How many are there? Um, eight. Was That's John cool. in that issue? That same issue, Scott? Yeah. Good guy. Yeah. Uh, you know. You know. Um, I didn't know him very well. Uh, but for some reason, I found that really impactful. It just was kind of like, whoa. A lot of the same uh, story. I talked to my brother, uh, well, texted with my brother and, and mentioned that he was such, he was always so kind every time I saw him. I didn't know him that well, but he always would say such kind things to me. And yeah. Was so and Steve had the same uh, experience with John and, and you see the outpouring and every, it's pretty uh, um, consistent. Yeah. He seemed like a good dude and I, and it was just one of those things where, you know, you don't think about that stuff until the opportunity's lost. I wish I'd known him better, you know, just based yeah. on everything I've heard and just what brief experiences I did have with him. What's funny is that uh, when we were doing that, uh, Morrison disappeared and, and uh, that weird here, really quick. Really quick. Um, I don't know. So the ass ponies were doing a photo shoot and this guy filled in. 
I don't know who he is, but he used to, I, th I think it was Randy that recruited him, maybe Chuck, to fill in for Morrison's absence. The long that. hair? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know who the guy is. <laughs> I'm not sure. But he's, he's in a whole series of photos that are ostensibly of the ass ponies. But, but what's, fu Everybody. what's funny is, is I remembered it being well, I that. I uh, them up down at Annie's. Yeah, something. I remembered it being a. Uh, I remember it being Earnhardt, Earnhardt that wasn't there, and Wes Pence remembered it being Randy that wasn't there. But we were both wrong. It was Dave Morrison. So. <laughs> For whatever it's worth. <laughs> Dan, Dan, what? what I mean, are you going to do a fundraiser? No. Any more I mean than. We have for our employees. There's one coming up again this weekend with Cincy Music, uh, and Inhaler uh, that. All the proceeds are going to our employees, but not for the business. You know, we're in that we're in that cesspool of government support now uh, with the pe the paycheck protection program and right. uh, emergency disaster relief loans, and so we're uh, we're just loading on the debt to the point where we decide, uh, you know, to stop. Come <laughs> get the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is, is uh, one of the things that concerned me about, uh, you know, how that whole thing was implemented, because uh, my brother is in kind of that morass as well, is it just seemed like the relief package just seemed like a circumstance where they were giving money to people to lend it and make money off of it later. I just yeah, wasn't and, sure. And reduce their capacity about 15, 20 percent. So yeah, that's reducing their revenue and... Uh, in the, the first, in, uh, the first round, I saw this story where the, the L.A. Lakers had gotten like tens of millions of dollars. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Like, what the They're lost revenue. <laughs> Went for that stuff. And the red tape was really confusing, too. So I'm sure all the corporations geared up with lawyers could figure it out faster than, sure. yeah. than the Yeah, the people with the high-powered attorneys. I, I would qualify, and I didn't even try. Like, yeah. It also uh, included a $500 billion slush fund that – requires no traceability whatsoever yeah no oversight and nothing for schools nothing, nothing for schools i mean that's there's so many people i know have kids right now and it's gotta be i mean i have dogs that's easy you just let them outside you know but you know you got to learn kids you got to learn them somehow. <laughs> you got to learn them oh could have been some money towards that yeah that's yeah, a well, whole issue uh, my girlfriend is a teacher at a, a title one school at cps and um majority of her kids don't even have internet and the district right. out uh stay-at-home curriculums that were all internet based if you didn't have internet they had literally mimeographed packets that had to be mailed to them wow right and then they were to be completed and mailed back that was the that that was the thing is is one of the only things that was discussed right out of the gate that was supposed to be um, on the table for schools was the idea that there would be some kind of internet or laptop offering to the students that didn't have it because it, the, the the numbers nationwide and they're saying as many as a third of American public school students don't have access to the kind of internet capabilities necessary to do the home school thing wow. you know and so. Which is kind of ridiculous considering it's not water. I mean, it's something that could be done. Uh, should be, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's stupid. I mean, the $1,200 a month they sent to everybody was a pittance. It was like a drop in the bucket of the package that they signed. They could have sent everybody $12,000 a month and it would have been less than 5% of the total dollar amount. You know, it just, you know, it just this goes back to the mismanagement question again. Well, I, yeah. saw, I saw an interview with, is it Steve Mnuchin? Um, mm. Who was saying? I always that, see it as munching, but yeah. Munching, yeah. But he was uh, right. saying he was claiming that, that twelve hundred dollars for a family of four was perfectly sufficient to cover rent and various monthly payments. Right, right. Because when because when he when he was in college, he had an apartment that was two hundred dollars a month yeah. that he split with a buddy. The last of his. time he had to pay for anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, and we could we could fill the cupboard with ramen Bill, noodles for six nowadays? bucks. Who? You. <laughs> what am I drinking these days? No, driving. Oh, Bill, what do you drive nowadays? Uh, you always got an out of the box car. <laughs> I, have a, 
<laughs> Dan's tiring of the Corona conversations. <laughs> well, I miss my Nova. I miss your Nova too. I miss the Nova. Uh, I miss it. I don't know anything about it. Dan, did you ever drive it? No. <gasps> it was it kind of. I hate to say this. It was kind of scary because we put a Corvette engine in it and did the whole thing. And did you? If, How'd you get rid of it? Because it only had lap belts, and I was scared shitless driving it. I've been <laughs> using belts that you know. Yeah, my work. dad's Mustang only has lap belts, but he's but, still I mean, out there mean, rolling in it. I mean, uh, I drive probably it. Probably not wearing it either. No, probably not. I drew, took it to Edgewater and scared the crap out of myself. So <laughs> <laughs> felt the power. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's weird not having disc brakes and things like that. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But now I drive a, a GTI. So. Nice. There you go. Your right your on. your WRX wagon is still going strong, by the way, Bill. Yeah, that was the. Oh, that was so sad that day. I sold it. I know. But you sold it. To me, so. <laughs> it was a hundred times faster. <laughs> I put a new clutch in it for Kip. Kip's son uh, bought the car, and I didn't, right. my clutch had been shot, so it had close to like. 340 horsepower or something in it. So I went and got it and I kept stalling out. It had so much power. And then I just handed the keys over. I was like, mm. <laughs> oh, we gone. So he got a new clutch and I'm out teaching uh, the boy how to drive a stick. And we're turning a curve, we're turning a bend. And suddenly the, the shifter just went straight down. Did and there, it was stuck in third gear. And so had to wait, get it towed, towed it back. And what happened was he forgot to put the winch pin in to hold the, the stick <laughs> in transmission. So it was a good lesson in an emergency man. Sure. Yeah. Take it to a professional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what year was the Nova, Bill? 74. Damn. Was, it, yeah. baby, was it baby ship brown? Uh, Black. But it was Go Fast Kentucky when I bought it because everything had zip ties holding it together. <laughs> God bless the zip ties, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, uh, Barb is the a, three. I drive a Camry hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I drive a 20 year old CRV. Yeah. 350,000 miles on it. Wow, that's impressive. It is. Barb, is the 3B Tavern still open in Bellingham, Washington? The 3B Tavern. The Bellingham Bay Brewery. Uh, I don't know. I don't know Bellingham that well. I don't get out that much. <laughs> you, I just, I just figured the town was so small, there was no way to miss it. She's traipsing in the woods all the time. That's where she gets her walk on. Picking wild mushrooms. Mm-hmm. No, there's cool stuff in Bellingham, but I don't, I don't go. I, I teach there and I play in the orchestra up there, but I don't go out there. I didn't even know you had left all recipes, Barb. That's how long it's been. Yeah, that was like 2013, I think, is when I left. Wow. Yeah, 13 years there. Great. Yeah. You have the best nature photos. I love them. Thanks. <laughs> I'm just glad you're here. These guys thought of you. I, I no offense. I didn't think of you. <laughs> and I was just going to do, I think it was just going to be Kip and Bill. And then the rest of it fell into place. So I'm very glad you guys are all here. Way over here. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so uh, um, there was a flurry recently in Cincinnati. Um, and obviously this is something to discuss for a future thing, but there was a flurry of old dudes putting their bands back together. Um, I, I had to, I had to take part in a couple anyway, um, and uh, and so I figure Barb, the way things are shaping up, if you fly out here in December of twenty one, I think the Roundhead reunion show should probably be ready to go. We're just, I'm ready. We won't be able to go anywhere yeah. to play. <laughs> right, we well, should be able to put ten people private, in front of us. I say you put ten people in front of you. Um, Danny, I'll, I'll work out the tech aspect of it. We'll do a live stream fundraiser thing. Be fun. Sure. It'll be fun. <laughs> sure. Come on, man. You know me long enough. Every once in a while, something I say comes true. <laughs> Rock and roll needs sweat and, and uh, commiseration, you know? 
It does, man. That's one of the things I've been asking people. Do they, do they think that the days of me being able to spend quality time with 400 of my closest friends getting our ears blown out by our favorite band is done forever, but it's definitely going to be a while. I just hope I'm not too old to enjoy it when it does come back. Here, here. What's the last show everybody saw? Mm. Culture was, Queer. Culture Queer at the uh, Northside Tavern Thanksgiving Saturday. I was actually supposed to see Nick Cave in Dublin, Ireland last week. Oh! That didn't happen. You, 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 literally, you, literally just trumped, you literally just trumped every single one of those this concert yeah. I'm missing. No one else talk. Yeah. <laughs> just like, listen, I, listen, I'm up against a hard out and having a lot of people, it, it, it's hard to give everyone an opportunity to talk. Were you guys, any one of you willing to do this again sometime? I'd love to have you. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys so much everybody take care please yeah, keep in touch with me <laughs> i love all you guys and i miss you all very love much you guys. hey everybody take care everybody bye scott bye barb nice to see you there <laughs>